أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فلا نضل له ومن يدلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship other than Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and final messenger. May Allah shower his peace and blessings on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, his companions, and all righteous believers who follow in that path of the Siratul Mustaqim. Dear brothers and sisters, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he went through various situations in his life. Various times that he had to learn a lot of things. And he had to learn those things so that he could pass on those teachings to us. To you and I. So that we can have those situations, those scenarios in front of us to understand how we should react in a particular situation. What should we be doing? And one of the earliest lessons that Rasulullah sallallahu wasallam was taught by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that each and every one of us is solely and completely dependent on Allah. Not an inch of us, but we are dependent on Allah. Not only dependent on Allah, but also dependent on the timing of Allah. If He wants something to happen to us, only then it will happen. So the time factor is dependent on what Allah wills. In life, we go through various situations. Our brothers and sisters around the world are going through different situations. Difficult situations, moments that are disturbing to the mind, to the heart, to the soul, they are disturbing. Situations that they have to face, that we have to face in life from time to time to time, again and again and again. And this difficult situations that we do face, there is one thing that we do really need to remember and that is to trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Trust Him in no matter what the situation is. Trust Him in all matters. Because you and I don't know. He knows. He knows completely what He is doing. He knows when things are supposed to be happening. That is Allah. You and I don't know. We cannot think beyond a certain limit. We have our restrictions. And if we are completely obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we have that complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then His decree will be in our favor. It will be in our favor. It might take its time. When the time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala feels is right, but it will be in our favor. Because there are times in life when we feel a particular trial or difficulty is going on for too long. Right? If I again think of my brothers and sisters in Palestine, the trial, they must be, they won't have any words to describe how difficult and how long it has been dragging on for. They must be tired of it going on and on and on. The difficulties, the trials... There seems to be no end to it. And nobody seems to be able to help them out. But trust in Allah. Belief in Allah. The time will come. In the case of Rasulullah he became a prophet at a time when things were not right. 
and he received some initial revelation after which he wanted the revelations to keep coming he wanted clarity he wanted to understand what to do next he wanted to understand how do i deal with these different matters that are there in life difficult matters these early muslims a bunch of early muslims handful of them how do i take them forward he was eager to understand what is going to happen next but then by the will of allah the revelation came to a standstill it stopped jibril alayhi salam was not coming anymore the prophet wanted him to come the prophet wanted to receive the next revelation the prophet wanted to understand what is what do i do next but by the will of allah it was not happening immediately to the extent that the zalimun of that time the quraish they started mocking the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ah your shaitan has forsaken you nauzubillah hurtful words their tortures to the early muslims on at full swing difficult situation and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not getting anything more he's not understanding what to do next until allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finally sent jibril alaihi salam with the next ayats wad duha wal layli iza saja ma wadda'aka rabbuka wa ma qala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is swearing by the forenoon and he is saying that he has not forsaken you he has not forgotten you he has not abandoned you he has not stopped watching you he has been seeing all along a clear message for us as well the right time will come the right time will come and then in the time of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam again as time passed some more revelations came through and then again a period of lull where there was no revelations jibril alayhi salam did not come down now at this point rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam had met jibril alayhi salam a few times he had started building a relationship with him in re- in re- getting those revelations a bond was forming the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam started missing jibril alayhi salam and he did not come down and that period happened again by the will of allah for whatever period it was and then jibril alayhi salam again came down and what did the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam say he said ya jibril why don't you visit us more often why have you come down after i have started missing you so much why not earlier why don't you come more often right a request from the greatest man to the greatest angel and what does jibril alayhi salam respond he says we only come down by the will of allah we come when he wants us to come we cannot do anything beyond that we come only when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to come down there is no other way it is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to whom belongs everything in this dunya and the akhira and anything in between this is what we need to understand the greatest man the greatest angel they cannot move an inch without the will of allah without the dependency on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but let us remember as i said wa ma kana rabbuka nasiya allah does not forget allah is watching each and everything everything is visible to him he will not forget no matter what the circumstances no matter who is involved no matter where they are involved everything is there the ayats of the quran some of them are very specific to scenarios that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam faced in his life 
they were revealed based on the situations and when they were going to happen these ayats are clear signs to us of how to react in certain situations either from the life of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself or from the life of the other prophets or even just the rules that have been given to us directly in the ayats today we are seeing countless situations where our community is facing issues in numerous ways but don't you think that allah is watching don't we understand that allah is watching each and every one of this these zalimuns these people who are doing oppression these people who think they are getting away we are getting hurt of course these pictures these videos of our brothers and sisters getting hurt we are getting we are seeing them we are getting hurt we are feeling bad we are thinking why is this not stopping and yet these guys who are doing those things they continue to do that they continue to kill they continue to cheat they continue to plunder they continue to steal without a remorse in the world but you and i need not forget that allah is watching each and every inch of difficulty that people have been giving us is taking account of is taken account of that whole information is getting collected nothing is escaping the eyes of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't you ever think that because time is passing for too long things will be forgotten the effects of it will be forgotten the oppressed and the oppressors will be forgotten allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself is saying don't think that allah is going to forget don't think that allah is not seeing what these oppressors are doing don't think that he doesn't know let these oppressors let these zalimun have their day let them do what they want because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is just delaying the inevitable it is coming every single day that these guys continue to do what they are doing they are only bringing their doomsday closer they are only bringing their doomsday closer when that day arrives each and every one's head will be at stake everybody will be there the one who oppressed the one who faced the oppression everyone will be asked about it on that day of judgment even if they themselves forget what they have done after doing the zulm right they have become so used to doing zulm right they just keep going but the hisab of each and everything the account of each and everything is being recorded let it come when the proceedings of the day of judgment come let us understand allah will not even let go of the things that have been done to animals the hisab will be taken the hisab will be taken for things that might have been done with birds and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself is saying that anyone who hurts a non muslim a non muslim under my protection i will be their prosecutor on the day of judgment if this is what is being told to us if this is what is being told to us imagine what is going to happen to these people they may forget they may think nothing is going to happen but you and i must remember we must remember that allah will do his justice anyone who has been harmed in any kind of situation will be dealt with so first and foremost let us consider our own selves think about it before that day comes of any kind of zulm that you may have done to somebody else let us start becoming mindful of that 
because you and i will be also accounted for on that day let us not be amongst those who do any kind of zulm upon another creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we will it is truly mind boggling of how we are going to stand in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i shudder to think the punishment that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might be planning for these zalimun who are doing oppression on our brothers and sisters but allah is planning and he is the best of planners it is coming sooner or later and if you are one who has been oppressed our brothers and sisters who have been oppressed time and again allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling about them as well he is saying i swear by my glory i hear you i see you i am watching i am going to help you but when the time comes let us be mindful of that as well let us not involve in discussions where we are saying ah time hasn't come yet why is it not happening why is allah not responding let us not get involved in that let us go back to the ayats that are telling us that the right time allah knows not you and i we need to be patient we need to be obedient we need to be following allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we need to be remembering that wama kana rabbuka nasiya the lord is not going to forget the lord is watching the pain of anyone is not going to be forgotten imam ahmad rahimahullah he says that sometimes you forget a harm that you did because the person that you did it to was forgiving forgiving nature they forgive you but allah might not forgive you the status of the person who forgave you might be elevated but you might not be forgiven because you haven't see sought forgiveness with allah and don't do the other way around as well where you're seeking forgiveness from allah but not seeking forgiveness from the creation of allah whom you are also supposed to be seeking forgiveness from whom you had done some kind of zulm on so both the things apply you must seek forgiveness from allah as well as any human being that you might have hurt in the slightest of way for whatever reason we must understand we must go back to the ayats of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to see how we can fix ourselves to see how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to fix the situation of this ummah we need to understand that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may overlook your mistakes he may forgive you he may even convert your bad deeds into good deeds on the day of akhirah but that doesn't allow us to become careless that doesn't mean that we should do evil in any sort of way try to think of what you are going to say and how you are going to face allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment how are you going to do that you think the zalimun who are walking on the face of this earth they are going to walk free on that day no not a chance if you think they are going to continue to crush other human beings in a ways that are undescribable torturing in ways that are beyond human nature you think they are going to get away with that Allah is watching Allah is watching and that is what should give us hope that is what should give us hope for our brothers and sisters around the world Allah is watching have patience have some sabr and Allah will not forget these incidents but you must remember Allah you must continue to be obedient to Allah you must continue to do zikr allah you must continue to make dua for your fellow human beings 
you must not forget them in your du'as. Yes, they are suffering in different parts of the world, but pray for them. Make du'a for them. If you have the ability, help them financially. If you have the ability, maybe stand in protests or do whatever you can in this world of social media. Do your bit. Lest you be forgotten when you are in need. Let us worry about that. If you truly talk to some of the people who are suffering, you will see that they have given up hope. They have literally given up hope. The attitude is like, no one cares. Nothing is going to happen. And it is truly a difficult situation to be in. We and I can, you and I cannot even imagine how they are feeling. It is very difficult situation, situations. The pictures and videos of torture and zulm are mind-boggling, unbelievable. And they continue to come. They continue to come. Do not become desensitized, my dear brothers and sisters. Continue to watch, continue to feel for your brothers and sisters, continue to make dua for your brothers and sisters. Please don't forget them. That is the only hope. Hope for your duas. And the time of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come, no matter whether you make the dua or not, but you will be accounted for whether you made it that dua or not. On the day of judgment, we all will be standing. And all these crimes that have been committed will be brought to justice. All those babies that have been killed, all those young children that have been killed, just imagine the situation. They will be brought forward standing right in front of those people who verily killed them. And Allah will do justice then. That is when we will be satisfied as well. We will see the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day. We will truly understand who has the complete power, the complete might, the complete strength. And that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, be the servant of Allah that is wrong, but do not be amongst those who has wronged somebody else. Do not be amongst those who have wronged somebody else. Let us be careful about that, my dear brothers and sisters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remember us in ways that are praiseworthy. May He save us and protect us so that we continue to follow on the Siratul Mustaqim. May He help us to remember our brothers and sisters in our du'as constantly. May He help them in ways which will elevate their status in the Akhirah. And may He bring an end to all these zalimun in the best ways that He can. May He forgive all of our sins. Wa akhiru da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.